Hi guys, this is Jim Brook from XP Network, and today we're going to show a transaction between two non-EVM chains that is possible in uh, XP Network NFT Bridge. And we're going to send an NFT from Ton to Near. Both chains are non-EVM, so that's why it might be of interest. So here we, we see that several wallets are available uh, for Ton, which is the chain of origin. Um, I have my account in Ton Wallet, that, that's why I'm selecting that. Okay, uh, some NFTs are not whitelisted. On Ton we still have whitelisting, we're working on removing it. And this will happen pretty soon, within a month, I guess, of work. Uh, so I already have a collection that has been whitelisted. So let's select it. It's called Albanic. We recently integrated this collection. And this is the first collection that ever traveled from Ton to Nier. So let's go and show how it works. So first we have to select this NFT. We can see that this NFT originates on Ton. This is the token ID of this particular NFT on Ton. This is the collection identifier and the attributes of this NFT. All right, so Let's do the following. We need a near address. So how we can do that? I can open my uh, near wallet and I'll grab my address from there. So let's say near wallet. Okay, and there you see my address. I can copy it like so. And this is my destination address on near. I also have another one which has a name, Dima B. Near. Uh, but I usually use this one address. This is like another address when I need to experiment and do something inside near between different addresses. And as you can see, this wallet will soon be deprecated, so we will have to transfer our uh, accounts and assets to another wallet. But so far it works, so we can still use it. Okay, so let's go here and paste the destination address valid for near, like so. Our NFT card has already been selected. So all we have to do is just approve. Uh, well, approval is just a formality for Ton, uh, but nothing really happens. That's why it happens so fast and we don't sign anything in the wallet. So the next step is we can check that our balance is enough uh, for us to cover the fees. Uh, so these are the fees both on Ton and on, on the chain of destination. We don't have any messages about deploying the contracts because the, this contract has already been deployed. Uh, right now, contracts are not automatically deployed between Ton and Near. So if you send to uh, between those two chains right now, without interacting with our team, uh, your NFT will arrive, but it will arrive to the def default contract on the chain of destination. If you want it to arrive to a specific contract uh, relevant only for your collection, right now you still have to interact with our team, who so will help you uh, deploy this contract and map it inside the bridge. Again, uh, once uh, whitelisting is removed on Ton, uh, at the same moment, uh, this necessity of interacting with us will also be gone. Uh, we're making it more and more decentralized. Eventually, it will be 100% decentralized. And uh, you won't have to interact with us at all. Okay, some chains are not integrated to, to version 3.1 of the bridge. Uh, therefore, still for some chains like Ton uh, and uh, near in some aspects you have to interact with us but it's going to be over in one or two months okay so we see that we have enough tokens we have a selected nft all we have to do is click send right now we are sending from ton this is why we have this uh, ton wallet open and we have to agree to send uh, ton there uh, i have to provide my address oh sorry my password Okay, it's very good that every time for every transaction it requires your password. It means that the access to your private key is always secured by the password. And whenever there is a transaction and there is a hacker that already sits on your computer, this hacker uh, doesn't have the password. So hopefully this hacker will never reach your private key on Ton. Of course, there are some tricks where they can catch your keyboards, uh, keyboard uh, clicks. Well, but that's another story. So anyway, it's good that this wallet protects your uh, privacy with the password every time you have to sign something. All right, so now we're sending Tom uh, from our account to uh, the uh, bridge smart contract. 
which will then distribute it to the necessary parts. So we will have to wait for this tone to be transferred. Once it's done here in the wallet, we can go back to the bridge. Okay, you see that it's done right here. We can close it. Uh, we can now go back to the bridge and we see that this transaction is being processed. Um, again, you have to remember this is an on-chain transaction. Uh, so we have to wait till our transaction is included in the block first on the chain of origin, which is Tom, and second on the chain of destination, which is near. Near, uh, near is a sharded chain, so transactions are also sharded, and they might may happen in three different blocks, so it also takes some time for them to happen. So we already have a transaction on Ton, which we can go and see. This is our transaction, it says success, so it seems like everything well, went well on Ton. Uh, we see that our transaction is still pending on Nier. Uh, before it gets to near, it, it goes through a network of validators that have to arrive to a consensus that this transaction is valid and uh, benevolent. Once the ne necessary threshold of uh, validators sign this transaction, it will be uh, sent uh, to the smart contract on near, and it will be checked if the signature is valid again. Uh, then the contract on near will mint this NFT in the relevant contract. Now, if for some reason you close this window or something happened here, you can always check. You can go to explorer.xp.network and you can check your transaction here. And as you can see here, we already have the destination transaction hash on near where we can actually open the card of this transaction so we can go this is the tr transaction on the chain of origin which is Ton. this is the transaction on the chain of destination on near so let's click it and see what happened so it says succeeded but uh, don't be uh, don't think that it's um, all good before you uh, scroll through the entire transaction because like I told you it happens in three different blocks it can succeed in two blocks, for example, and break uh, in the last one. So let's scroll. And I'll show you how to check uh, the transaction that they, it's all good. So first of all, here you see uh, the details of the transaction where this NFT was minted. So this is the NFT we were sending. I can go back here and see. That's the one. See, Albanic 3590. See, that's the one, right? And we're on a live mainnet explorer. Okay, there's a description. There's the, there are the links uh, to the storage and metadata. We can also see that this account will get royalties. Uh, 1500 stands for 15%. Uh, because on chains, there is no uh, floating point numbers. That's why you have to multiply it by 100 uh, to get uh, digits uh, after a dot uh, so for example it's like uh, 15.00 that's what it means okay and then you have the signature data so here we see all good and this is the function that was called in the bridge contract on the chain of destination and this is the address of the contract right so let's see um, right now it's a success okay and um, on near it's very important that events are emitted so this is the first event that was emitted, which is good. It said NFT mint, so our NFT was minted. This is the token ID of our NFT on near, and we have to scroll down. It's okay. First of all, it's good that we don't have error messages. You see, uh, no error messages, which is a very good sign. And we had an event, which is important for the indexer. Uh, the indexer is responsible for finding your NFTs by your address and uh, all the marketplaces are based on this indexer. Uh, that's why this event is super important. So when this event is emitted, the indexer catches it and uh, populates the information on all the marketplaces. And now we can view this NFT in the marketplace. Actually, it still takes some time to propagate this information. Uh, so we may eventually open the marketplace and not see it just yet. 
uh, but hopefully while I'm speaking uh, this information gets uh, to the necessary uh, databases of the marketplaces and we will see it. Also this is the contract address on near so this NFT was minted right here in this contract. As you can see it says uh, Ton Albanic which is uh, you see Albanic which comes from Ton so that's why this collection is called so. At dot near means that we are on the mainnet. Uh, if it were a dot testnet, then we were on the testnet. So it, it, it says that this uh, contract uh, was deployed on the mainnet, and, and that's where we should be looking for our NFT. Okay, uh, let's actually view the NFT in the marketplace. Let's uh, say mint base XYZ. This is one of the marketplaces on near let's wait and open okay it opens take some time All right and here i'm already logged in obviously and we can see my nfts on near i guess we have to scroll this way let's see uh some media not is not available this is just that i have and let's see whether this NFT arrived. Okay, so it says no title. Probably it means that it just should take some time for the marketplace to get this information. This already happened before. Uh, the indexer takes some time to deliver this information to the marketplace. That's why I told you we probably should wait. Okay, what we can do is this. We can go to the wallet in the meantime. And here are the balances of my fungible tokens and collectibles show my non-fungible tokens. So let's scroll here and see whether this NFT arrived. And yes, there it is. Okay, this NFT arrived to near. We can see it here. Uh, this is the NFT ID. This is the smart contract of the NFT, Ton Albanic, just like we talked about it before. Uh, this is the part where we can view our NFTs and the owner, this is my address. Okay, so uh, fortunately the wallet works faster. Marketplace. And let's see, maybe it's already here. Refresh it. Actually should see this NFT. For some reason it doesn't. I just wanted to show you that all the attributes are there. Well, obviously they are because the wallet sees the image, at least, of this NFT. Well, unfortunately, we'll probably have to wait uh, for, for the marketplace to get all this information. Let's refresh it like this. Unfortunately, I guess this is one of the those two NFTs where it doesn't have the information. Uh, there's another thing we could do, I guess. We could search by the NFT collection. Let's try and do that. So let's let's go to the wallet. Here. Right, let's grab the NFT collection, like so, and paste it here in the search. Okay, so it sees the collection, right? There it is. Doesn't see my NFT just yet, so probably take some time. Also, it's good that I'm showing you this. So you won't be uh, scared or surprised that it takes some time for the indexer to see this NFT. Uh, you see it happens to other people too. This NFT is not there yet. Without I try to refreshing, it's not there yet, but it will definitely arrive. Another place where we can check that this NFT arrived. So first of all here, we see that the transaction has been completed. We have both transaction hashes, which we already checked. We have our own NFT indexer um, developed uh, in by, by home uh, developers of XP Network. What we can do is we can refresh the bridge 
And now instead of going tone to near, we can say near to tone, like so. Uh, we will need near wallet, which we already have open in this browser. Uh, this is the address, so we just click next. It says that uh, we have to provide allowance for at least 0.25 near. Okay. Um, I guess this is for the transaction fees so that the wallet doesn't have to ask us again. And <clears throat> let's check the NFTs that I have here. Okay, so for some reason the indexer didn't do its job yet. It is just yet. Even though we can see it in Okay, so let's let's just wait, it will surely arrive. Okay, anyway, the NFT is here in the wallet. We know that it's here, it belongs to this account. Uh, we just have to wait for it to be propagated to all the necessary units. Anyway, this is how you bridge from Ton to Near. That's uh, very important because uh, XP Network is the only bridge between those two chains where you can uh, bridge NFTs. Uh, you are welcome to come and try. So you can see that uh, already uh, many users bridged these between those two chains. So these are somebody else's transactions. Again, from town to near, the same collection because this is the one that we recently integrated. And you're also welcome to come and, and try. And as you know, we uh, bridge between 30 plus chains and we keep integrating more blockchains. We are the only bridge with so many non-EVM chains. Uh, so if you want to bridge from uh, the chains that you are used to, to the chains that uh, are new to you, this is the one that you need. Uh, the bridge is very important for uh, collections because minting your collection on another chain without a bridge uh, makes it stuck on that blockchain. But if you bridge it, then it's always possible to, to return it to the chain of origin or to send to other uh, blockchains while it's still connected to its original uh, contract. It keeps the integrity of the collection. It makes sure you don't have duplicate um, IDs. And basically it makes everybody feel that this is an entity which hasn't been broken uh, by mistakes in coding, logic or uh, mistakes in deploying contracts on different blockchains. So that's why bridges are super important. They also allow you to have collections uh, on the chains where you are not familiar with the protocol. It automatically deploys uh, contracts on many chains, many non-EVM chains, even from EVMs or vice versa. For example, if you send from EVMs to near, it will automatically deploy a contract for you and your collection will arrive there or again, vice versa. If you send a collection from near to many EVMs, it will do the same. So how do you know which EVMs um, are compatible with this standard? You can go to docs.xp network, go to documentation, it's open, and go to multi-bridge version 3.1. As you can see, we were progressing from version 1, 2, 3, and then 3.1. Okay, here in the introduction, you have the list of fully supported chains. At the moment, the fully supported chains are 18. Among them are Near, Solana, which are non-EVM chains. Most of the other chains are EVM. So you can see if you have NFTs on one of those chains and you want to send to Near or Solana, or vice versa, you have you, you don't have to turn to us. You can directly do so, and the contract will be deployed for you. Uh, don't be surprised that the first NFT transaction will be much more expensive than the others because you will also pay for this contract deployment. The following NFT transactions will be very cheap because you don't have to deploy anything. So for example, if you're a collection owner, uh, do it first, deploy the contracts, and then your community uh, will uh, transfer NFTs to the other side uh, with very low rates. Well, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe not to miss our future videos. And see you next week.